That is my uh, new studio there. It's just being worked on, so we're hanging out here. Thank you for joining me. This is my mic. Something looks a little blurry. Maybe it's just too well lit. It's just give me one second. It's <laughs> Maybe that's better. Thank you for hanging in there. It's hard to uh, set these things up this way. Actually, oh shit. Thank you for your patience. That's 30 seconds you hung with me that you didn't need to. And I appreciate that. Uh, so I got a story to tell you. And it's a weird one. It's a strange one. Um, there are some cool stuff last night. Leon Edwards, Walt Harris, Dan Hooker, um, Andre Arlovsky. I'm going to make a separate video and talk about those. Okay? Is that cool? Um, I want to uh, to tell you a story. Um, and I think this is all I'm going to talk about in this one because it's a weird one. I just want to kind of get it off my chest. Uh, so um, I don't do a lot of negative talking or thinking or I look at there's a lot of beauty in most things some something wonderful happens in a fight it's really about the mistake of the other and so often about um, something that someone did correct even if someone made a mistake I may have caused you to make that through my correct actions so there's so much positive to always look at and I'm always looking for it um but uh I'm talking about Greg Hardy here and uh in a weird way, I'm actually not. But I'm going to tell you a story, an experience that I had that creates a bias in me. Now, very quickly, people you'll hear people say, oh, I like this politician or athlete or whatever. They're not biased. All humans are biased. We, once we accept bias, we can understand it, work around it, work with our own bias. Wherever you were born, there's biases around that, different in Asia or Europe or North America or South America, you have bias. You, it's normal. We're all biased in certain ways. If you've been indoctrinated into a particular religion at a young age, you'll have biases in that area. If your parents have a certain job or political leaning, you may develop those. That's normal, very normal. We all have them. I have a bias. Uh, and I'm trying to figure out how and why. Um, so I made very simple, you know, I'm just thinking out loud sometimes on Twitter and Instagram and so forth. Um, during fights, that's what people do these days. We share thoughts. And so I wrote, I don't have a positive reaction to this particular gentleman in the cage. That's what I, uh, that's what I mentioned regarding when I saw, saw Dan, um, uh, Greg Hardy. Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, who's the nicest human being on earth, was like, I agree. <laughs> so you got to do something. There's got to be something if Stephen Thompson doesn't like you. But uh, so people then asked me, you know, if you didn't know about his past or if you didn't know certain things, what would you, um, you know, would you still have that same feeling? And I don't know the answer to that because we have bias, but I have to tell you a story. This story is not about Greg Hardy. It's not implying anything about Greg Hardy. I'm not saying that because I'm trying to legally protect myself. I'm just trying to be very honest here. One moment. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. But if I didn't deal with that, that was going to deal with us. Um, so I'm not talking about Greg Hardy. And I'm not saying that because, I, like I said, I'm not trying. I don't, I'm worried about getting sued or anything. This is my channel. I'm speaking truth. But I just want to be clear, this is a story of an experience that I had that created a bias in me, but it is a doozy. So 2009, I was uh, working for a company called The Score Fighting Series. It was this awesome show. It was developed, spearheaded by a friend of mine named Brendan, uh, Brendan Fife who uh, to this day were friends. I like him very much. Um, and we put together this show. It had all the best Canadian fighters. Uh, it was action packed. It had a real flavor of what Bellator has always kind of done, you know, very sort of family oriented as in everybody worked together. And it was an incredible, incredible uh, show, the score fighting series. And I wanted to commentate with Moro and Michael Chavello, and I ultimately did get to commentate with both those guys, and it was wonderful. To earn my way in, I volunteered, worked for free, carried the spit bucket, did uh, interviews behind the scenes later, which is not my forte, nor was what I wanted to do, by the way, NASA 50th anniversary uh, of the moon landing. Um, and I did what I had to do, and I earned my way in. I did analysis before and after. It was a really great learning ground for me and a wonderful job. 
So Elias Theodoro, we brought him in there. Alex Ricci, a lot of the, the, the big fighters that would ultimately do. Misha, a lot of the big fighters that would do great things in Canada. Um, so there was a, a guy who was booked on some shows where, where I won this belt, Canadian Bantamweight Championship belt of Elite One. Very proud of it. Um, and uh, Elite One was booking a guy. And I had somehow become involved with him, and he he got my phone number. This again, this is a story related to my bias of how I feel when I see Greg Hardy in the cage. It's not about Greg Hardy; it's about this gentleman. His name he's not a gentleman. Uh, this uh, a, a man named Justin Primer. So Justin Primer was a fighter, and he had got my my number, and he started to text me, "Hey, bro, it's your boy Ninja." He was there. I, if you can if you can call texts. Charming, very fun, lighthearted. I didn't, texting was newer, 2008 or nine, whenever this was, but we became friends immediately. Then he was calling me and he was talking about his training. We knew a lot of the same people in common. And uh, so, you know, we're in touch way more than no people who don't know each other somehow, but it felt normal. So then I, at some point I said, hey, so uh, your fight is next weekend. And he said, no, I got pulled off the card. And I said, well, why? Why did you get pulled off the card? And it's a, there was a long pause, and he said, Google my name, and if you still want to be friends, uh, if you don't want to be friends, I understand. So I Googled his name, Justin Primer, and he was convicted of manslaughter. They said it was an unintentional death. Um, they, they, there, some of the, there were conflicting reports, but it was a moonshine uh, a bootlegger who made or sold uh, alcohol. And he was, I think, a juvenile and he ended up, I think, stabbing him or, or beating him to death. I don't know. It's horrific. So by this point, I'm already sort of have become friends with this individual. And he seems, and then, so, you know, and something about the, the way he said, you know, if you still want to be friends, some, uh, it, it, it was all very strange. So, uh, you know, I ended up continuing to chat with him and he talked about the mistakes that he had made when he was a kid. He, and again, we're, we're, we're talking. I'm talking about my bias towards Greg Hardy. This does not have anything to do with Greg Hardy, nor am I trying to imply that it does. I'm talking about my personal experience. So this guy, Justin Br Primer, I, I, after becoming friends with him, very charming fighter, individual. You know, I, I was young in the game. Anyone I could chat with about fighting and training and the experience, I'd fought a few times at the stage. Um, and so he talked about being rehabilitated and the mistakes that you made and trying so hard to change, you know, and influence people in a positive way. And, and, but that it was hard because people were holding his past against him. And over time, then another friend of mine comes in. Uh, I don't need to say his name, he, but he was a world champion in, in a combat sport. And he was like, man, this guy's a real special person. Like he's, he had, and so there were more and more people telling me this guy, who was a, had con, been convicted of manslaughter was a good person, and I started to see it and feel it. I'm like, wow, it's unfair the way people are treating this guy. You know, don't we have a a, a chance, and a, don't we believe in rehabilitation? So he wants to fight for the Score Fighting Series a year, a year and a half after I've got to know him. So I go ahead and I write a letter recommending him. And I looked it up this morning before, as I was really thinking about all this and why I might feel this way, and. Uh, you know, when you look it up, I, it's unreal what I'm saying about this guy over time. You know, he's a wonderful person. He teaches youth. He's a model of rehabilitation. He's an example of what we can do when we change our lives. All this shit. And I recommend him. Now, Brendan, who uh, was the who ran the company and was a good friend and we were close. Uh, so he's not going to judge me because we know each other past a couple of letters or things. So he's like, we just can't put this guy on, Robin. I'm sorry. Like he's, it doesn't matter who or what he is, but the audience will look and, and say, this guy murdered somebody and you're, you're celebrating him on TV. We can't do it. And I was disappointed. And I was like, Brendan, you know, you don't want, you don't know him. So I pushed, pushed, pushed. They wouldn't put him on. And I felt disappointed because this was a guy who everything I, believe I'm with empathy and knowledge and that I, I know people and I, and I, I'm thoughtful and I, I you know, I, I'm not easy to, to trick. 
um, I have a healthy but polite skepticism about things because I know that not everything everyone says is how they feel. Sometimes you you have many reasons that aren't even intentionally bad to say things. People sometimes don't know what they're saying or why they're saying it. I don't know what I'm saying or why I'm saying sometimes as an individual, and neither do you, although not all of us necessarily see that. So I push for this guy, Justin Primer, to be on the score fighting series, and they won't put him on. And I lose track of him. And then a few years later, Justin Primer is convicted, is caught. They, they, um, he is caught because he, uh, he, th- he threw his girlfriend from a seventh story when, uh, balcony. He, he assaulted her and then threw her off of a seventh story balcony. And, uh, she was, paralyzed in a wheelchair and blind until she died two years later. And, uh, I mean, you know, uh, I had every belief like I, that this was a good person. You know, that this was a changed person, the way he spoke, the way he he expressed himself, the way the the this the feel of just real kindness that you see. But this was not this was not a good person. This was a violent offender. And I went and recommended him to to. um to my boss and to the people. And I spoke so highly of this man and I like stood up for, for that. And he killed somebody's daughter. And, you know, um, it could in the most brutal, violent way that you can imagine. And it uh, took two years for her to pass away. And, uh, you know, now, now I'm not saying that has anything to do with a guy that we see fight in a cage, this guy or any other guy. Um, but, and I'm not saying that that guy or any other convicted offender that we see that sometimes there are one in a hundred or one in 300 in our, in our, in fighting or law, law or police. I mean, but there are sociopaths and they manipulate people and, um, it's a, and after that, so it shook me, you know, uh, uh, and, um, yeah, so he was uh, eventually was was given a violent uh, offender status, with a type of status in Canada, which means that we're like, this is somebody too dangerous to ever be out in the open. And I, fuck, I believe this was one of the sweet examples of people changing their lives. And uh, and I went to bat for him. And uh, fortunately, they didn't put him in the cage. They didn't. I, we didn't talk about him in a broadcast sitting there, me and Chevello or, or Morrow wearing headsets saying, you know, this is an example of how people, but we would have, and I would have done it. And I would have fully believed it. I would have, I would have said that this was a wonderful, sweet human being. That was a perfect example of how, how people can be changed and re- rehabilitated. And uh, I would have, and I did say those things to people and to my people in the organization, trying to convince them to put him up in that place and celebrate this, this man. Um, and it shook me, you know, when you read and I have, and I haven't thought about it a lot until last night. And I thought about it because people asked me, I, I literally just, I'm, I just didn't feel right. I'm like, I don't have a positive reaction to this particular gentleman in the cage. I'm not saying, I'm not judging somebody. I'm not saying it has anything to do. I'm not implying that this means this, or I just, that was how I felt. And then somebody said, would you feel that way if you didn't know him? And I said, impossible to know. Would I feel this way if I hadn't had this experience? Impossible to know. But I did have this experience. A violent offender who killed somebody can convince many people, including me, that he should have been put in there and celebrated on national TV on the biggest show that we had in Canada at the time, talked about by people who love martial arts like me and Moro. And, you know, we were, I, I went, I said, with every piece of me that I trust to to decide what he really is, I said, "You should do this. This is this is a great story. This is a great person." I fucking did that, and then he killed somebody's daughter. You know, threw her off a balcony. So, 
So that was my story. So I'm biased. I'm biased. I just wanted to say that. I I um I analyze fighting. Um, I analyze the UFC on television in Canada, where the UFC broadcast partner, and uh, I have talked about this gentleman. Who again, this story doesn't ne- doesn't need to have anything to do with him. It doesn't. It may have nothing to. Probably does have nothing to do with him. This is my experience. I'm just a person. I'm just a person doing my job and trying to make sense of the world around me. That's all any of us are. That's all any of us are. So, so uh, I. Uh, I talk about that guy's skills and when we go and we're all a little hesitant, nobody's really quite sure. This hasn't been really laid out. There's no rule book on how to do this. So at um, TSN where I work, we all do the very best we can. What, what, what is the story here? Okay. People know the background. We don't need to say it every time. So uh, what happened in the cage? And I can say that I can, I can do that. That's my expertise. So I can do it. And I have done it. I've been on there and said, this man did this. He moved this way. This happened. He was unsure. You know, it looked like when, when he need that man in the head. I don't know. Again, I'm biased. My history, my experience, my personal experience creates a natural bias in me. And don't judge me for it. You all have bias. All people have bias. It is what it is to be human. But we do our best um, because this is this is the sport or the television. This is where we work. This is the choices that they've made to put this gentleman on. I keep saying gentleman. It's a kind way to say person or whatever. Um, they put him in there and he fights. And, and so we do our job to the best of our ability. And mine is to describe the action that happened in there. Nobody's asking me, particularly not on a broadcast, television broadcast. Nobody's asking me to cast judgment or even to have an opinion. And I'm not sure what my opinion is. Again, it's been colored by my past, my experience. We all have. Everything you believe is shaped by your personal life experiences and your belief systems, which are shaped by each other, and they shape each other. So this is mine. Um, and, uh, you know, that, that young woman's family will never be the same, you know? Never, ever. Uh, and all I tried to do was put him on television in a cage. I'm very ashamed of that. I feel really weird about it. I feel really taken advantage of and manipulated that somehow I could be shaped to believe things so strongly. Uh, I learned a very valuable lesson, very valuable lesson uh, from that. So so I didn't like say give him parole or put him out in the world, but these people, th- this is what happens with people like Justin Primer, this individual, um, they get put out into the world and somebody makes that decision based on their charm and their personality. And uh, so, um, but again, this doesn't, I'm not saying this has anything to do with that person, that guy who fights in the UFC fought last night. I'm not, it doesn't. This is entirely my experience. This is entirely an experience that I had that I wanted to share with you. Um, And I feel a little better talking about it because it's been weird. I haven't really talked about it since I found out in like 2013 or whatever that that had happened, it hit me like crazy. I'm like, fuck, I thought, like really it was shocking. Very shocking, very. Cause it's not like, oh, I knew it. That guy, it's like somebody led into your life and like into your mental relationships. Not let, if they're good at that, they made their way in there. But I definitely send out, uh, you know, when, as I thought about it last night and as I thought about it this morning, really just thought about the families of the people that he killed, you know, it's horrific. Anyways, I'm sorry to be a downer and I hope that's, uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I, I, I don't know what we can get out of that story, to be honest. I thought maybe I'd have some kind of conclusion, but I certainly don't. The world is a scary and unpredictable place. It is. There are good people everywhere and we should spend as much time with them as we can. And we should try to be good to the people around us because if you're nice to the cab driver, he'll be nice to the next person in there. He'll be nice to somebody else, you know? And, and I guess <laughs> my biggest takeaway here is we admit that we all have biases. Once you, and it's not some scary or weird to admit. This is what it is to be human. Your opinions are not your own. They, they haven't been just magically appeared there. They're shaped by the things you see, read, hear, you know, what you watch. You know, if you took somebody from that watches MSNBC all day and you threw them in a, in a Fox News environment for about three years, they'd believe that. And then they'd think the other guys were crazy. This is just, we're shaped by what we, what we get. 
Uh, so we have bias. I have bias in this case. Um, but I also, I'm proud to be a professional. I'm proud to do what I do. And I know without a question that I can, I can talk about that man's performance in the cage in an environment of work, and I can do a very good job of it. I have done it, and I'm very proud of that. This is my private environment, and you guys are my friends, and I can talk about this here. And I think, uh, I think you made me feel better. Um, in about 15 or 20 minutes, I'm just going to wash my face. I feel a little dirty. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to talk about Dan Hooker, Walt Harris, Leon Edwards, and the fucking most beautiful thing in the world. And that is combat between willing or, you know, people who agree to mutual combat for our entertainment and for their own adventure. Fighting. It's wonderful. Thank you guys for uh, hanging with me. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. That's, that's it. Blackout.